Welcome everyone. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at the best places to stay in Osaka. And as you probably already know, Osaka is the second largest city in Japan with about half of Tokyo's population. So just over 19 million people. And just like with Tokyo, where you stay can make a tremendous amount of difference as far as extracting the absolute maximum value as far as your time, your money, and also having the best possible access to the activities that you may have planned for your itinerary. Now, I will give you my opinion based on what I value as far as my style of travel is concerned and some of the considerations that I make when I initially plan my trips. And of course, there's no set in stone universal answer that will accommodate everybody because everyone has different values and they structure their, you know, trips and vacations around different objectives. You know, some people like to spend time outdoors, other like to go on a foodie vacation which is amazing and Osaka is definitely the place where you might want to do something like that so basically just take this information bend it to your will and use it to create the perfect itinerary for yourselves with that said I want to take up as little of your time as possible so my very first choice is the Shin Osaka area the number one reason I value Shin Osaka is because this is the station that accommodates the bullet trains. So if you're planning on doing a lot of different day trips, if you're going to go to Fukuoka, if you're going to go to Himeji, if you want to check out Hiroshima, which is incredible, and it cannot be understated how amazing the A-bomb museum and the various surrounding area there is. They're also known for a few other things like Okonomiyaki, so it's a fantastic city it has a unique vibe definitely recommend that one you also have tokyo two hours north so that's an expensive train ride if you have the jr pass staying near shin osaka station is trivial it takes just a couple hours to swing up to tokyo and back uh, so again the shin osaka station is going to make this a lot easier of a process to accommodate your day trips it's going to take a lot of the frustration out of the process on this trip i have stayed at a brand new appa hotel I believe this is a relatively popular chain in Japan. This was my first attempt at staying at one of these smaller business type hotels. And while it was relatively small, it did accommodate a full sized luggage. So I don't have to bust out my Tetris skills to kind of make it fit within the uh, square footage that was available to me. That being said, the hotel had all the amenities that a fancier hotel would have had. They had like a built in onsen. They had in-room massage, room service, and they had a fancy restaurant and all kinds of cool stuff. I didn't really take advantage of it because I was there to, well, do my day trips, which is why I stayed in Shin Osaka, but it was a great experience and I would recommend it. Now, the best thing about this location was that it was literally five minute walk to the station. And this allowed me to do some ridiculous day trips, uh, including Mount Aso. If you have not yet seen my top three day trips from Osaka video, check it out for more information on what that entailed crazy day trip but anyways it would have not been possible if i didn't get a 6 a.m start to the day which means i had to take the very first bullet train out of shinosaka station all the way to kumamoto so again being close to that station is going to be fantastic as far as those types of plans are concerned and shinosaka also has plenty of shopping they have lots of cool restaurants the station itself has a tremendous amount of fantastic food but that goes for all the rest of the amenities around the station as well and the wonderful thing is a lot of these places are going to be open late as late as 10 o'clock some are open till closer to midnight so you're not going to be lacking that much by not crossing the river towards osaka station not to be confused with Shin Osaka. Shin means new or heart. In this case, it's new. So new Osaka station. Now, 
I don't know if it was just bad luck or something was going on when I happened to be there, but there were a lot of trains that were delayed or outright canceled while I was waiting to come back to Shen Osaka Station from Osaka Station. And sometimes I would wait 15 extra minutes. Again, this just adds to the headache as far as day trips are concerned. If you miss a train, not of your own fault or your own doing, and you miss a connection to, you know, an important bullet train that you have to take and then you have to wait another hour or whatever and it's just going to ruin your day and you might not even have enough time to accommodate your full plans for that day so again shinosaka station going to take a lot of the frustration and the guesswork because you can literally roll out of bed if you get one of the hotels around the station of which there are many because of course they understand that tourists are going to be utilizing those services for that exact reason reason and it's just going to make your lives a whole lot easier this also brings up the kyoto equation now i have seen both sides of the coin on this one people either gravitate towards kyoto and they say you know you can just take a day trip to osaka if you want i however am on the other side of that fence i prefer to stay in osaka and make day trips to kyoto the reason being because shin osaka is my first choice I have the ability to take the bullet train to Kyoto Station and it's a very quick 15 minute ride. So, you know, you could very well say, well, if you stay in Kyoto, it's also 15 minutes to come to Shin Osaka. And that's very true. I will concede that is a very fair argument, but there's a few things we have to consider. And again, there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just my personal take on it. Kyoto shuts down early. 6 p.m. is kind of when businesses start closing. After all, just because the tourist attractions are popular and famous, people are doing shift work when their shift ends you know the attractions end as well and kyoto as a result becomes very quiet after 6 p.m and that might very well be what you are interested in if you want that quiet mellow you know those semi-empty streets that you can walk on and just relax then kyoto is a great choice for you and if you want a little bit more excitement a little bit more buzz you can by all means come into osaka in the evening that being said and kyoto does have evening activities as well but you can not compare that to Osaka. Again, Osaka is the second largest city in Japan and your options are limitless. You can check out Kita District where you have the Umeda Sky Building. You can go to Namba and Dotenbori. The lights don't go out there until 10 p.m. and even after all the neon shuts down for the night, a lot of other bars and restaurants go well into the midnight range and you can spend your nighttime there. Uh, no problem whatsoever and of course you have the internal train and bus systems to accommodate you which also go till about midnight and then they resume at five in the morning so very similar to Tokyo in that regard but you don't have to worry about catching you know a 40 minute local train from Kyoto uh, just to get back into Osaka or vice versa because you're already there so that's kind of the consideration as far as why I choose Osaka it just gives you more things to do in the evening and if you want to do the switcheroo and head into Kyoto by all means that works out great now as far as places to stay in Kyoto I have stayed at the Hotel Grand Via location which is a five-star hotel that is attached to Kyoto Station of course because it's a five-star property it can be expensive there are deals occasionally but for the same reason that I choose Shin Osaka Station, I would recommend Hotel Granvia because you can literally roll out of bed and in five minutes you can be in front of that bullet train if you have a day trip centric itinerary the way I generally plan my own. So it is amazing. I have nothing but good things to say about that property. And even though it is part of the physical station in Kyoto, you never hear the trains. It's perfectly soundproof. And 
The hospitality is nothing short of incredible. It is Japan. It is a five-star resort after all. Now, if you're flying into Osaka as opposed to starting your Golden Triangle adventures in Tokyo, there are two airports in the Osaka region. You have the Osaka International Airport, which is actually on the same side of the river as Shin Osaka Station. So getting from the Osaka International Airport to Shin Osaka area is going to be trivial, very, very quick, very efficient, very much the same as getting from Haneda Airport into Shinagawa or Shinjuku or Ginza or whatever other area in Tokyo that you are interested in staying in. So that is fantastic. Now, the Kansai International Airport is all the way on the other side of Osaka. So that's going to be about a one hour trip. Again, very similar to the positioning and the distance of Narita Airport to Tokyo, that 45, 55 minute uh, trip duration. And of course, that is a little bit of a journey. Uh, you have a few other options if you want to stay a little bit closer to that airport. Tenoji Station is a major transportation hub in Osaka and that's going to be a lot closer. And from Tenoji Station, you can utilize the Osaka Loop Line to basically get everywhere else. And it also has the Mirosuji Subway Line, which is the other major popular line that's going to basically take you through all the major districts in Osaka, at least the ones that pertain to the tourism industry, if you will. So to wrap up my first point, Shin Osaka is easily my number one choice as it ticks every single box as far as what I value and the compromises as far as accessibility to the nightlife and the foodie district in Osaka is more than acceptable, especially again, because the JR lines and the Mirosuji line runs very similar to the way that the Yamanote lines in Tokyo. So it makes it relatively easy for me to access those things, even though it's a bit of a travel a distance, maybe about 10, 15 minutes to kind of get into the heart of Osaka. But at 10, 15 minutes, it's literally the exact same compromise I made with staying in Shinagawa and then taking 15 minutes to get into Shinjuku. So just having that accessibility for the bullet train is a huge priority for me. Now, if day trips are not part of your itinerary or you don't plan on utilizing the bullet train to access the day trips that you are interested in, my second recommendation as far as the second best place to stay in Osaka is going to be Kita District. Kita District is home to Osaka Station. This is the most important transportation hub in Osaka. Every major line basically converges at this station, including the four JR lines, which is fantastic because if you're planning on using your JR pass internally within Osaka to save a bit of money and have your travel cost covered under that JR pass, these train lines are going to take you to a number of different places, including Kyoto and Nara. Of course, being local trains, they're going to be a bit slower than the bullet train. So where the bullet train takes about 15 minutes, between Shin Osaka Station and Kyoto. If you're going with the local train route from Osaka Station, it's going to be about 40 minutes to Kyoto and just under one hour to Nara. So again, it is included and because you're choosing Osaka Station, since you are not necessarily going out of Osaka that frequently, it's still a fantastic option spending that extra 30 minutes that you would have otherwise saved with the bullet train. Now, you may have noticed that I prioritize travel convenience and transportation convenience above just about anything else. And pardon me if that's a little bit overbearing. However, I feel like that is the most stressful component of our vacationing, of our trips, just having to move from place to place or having to deal with a second language and trying to find our directions and the way to get to where we want to get. 
stuff and of course the crowds that are involved in that. So if we can reduce that stress and focus on the fun stuff, that makes it all the much better in my opinion. Now speaking of the fun stuff, Kita District is a massive shopping area. You have dining, you have entertainment, anything that you could possibly want from Osaka is going to be available in Kita District. You will be very spoiled for choice when it comes to restaurants especially. You have some gorgeous options for both daytime and nighttime sites and despite my discomfort with tall man-made objects I don't mind being at the top of any mountain but when it comes to buildings and other things that were built by people I get a little bit wheezy the higher up we go uh, but the Umera Sky building is absolutely spectacular especially at night which kind of lets you really see how massive Osaka truly is in fact when you're at the top of that building and you're just gazing far into the horizon the lights never seem to stop it seems like an endless field of just neon and electricity and the vibe is incredible as you may already know japan is famous for how clean and organized it is and i have to say kita district above all the other districts in osaka particularly struck me as being well organized the streets were mint they were clean they were a little bit wider than other parts of osaka as well which was quite nice it was easy to get around to the various attractions the shrines the parks and the various entertainment and food districts the shopping was incredible as well so I have nothing but good things to say about Kita district it felt like a very modern very well organized part of Japan very much the way I would consider Ginza in Tokyo for example my third option is going to be Namba the Namba area is the place to be if what you value the most is going to be the nightlife they also have some world-renowned food places and markets and plenty of shopping to boot. Now Namba Station is only a 10 minute walk to Dotonbori and Dotonbori is the famous place that has all of the wonderful canals where you can take the boat tours and more so the face of Osaka or at least what seems to be the Glico Man neon sign and the thousands of other neon signs that pepper the Dotonbori canals and at night you have that neon light radiating into the water and just such a cool atmosphere even the John Wick movie that was partly shot in Osaka features the wonderful Glico man neon light sign so I'm sure you guys have seen this in just media across the world as is. Now as a result, Datambori is extremely crowded and there's a certain buzz, a certain vibe, like an endless wave of energy just waltzing, dancing at the whims of the people exploring the entire area and going from food stall to food stall and checking out the takoyaki, the okonomiyaki and all the incredible stuff that Osaka is known for and the street food category. So if you plan on staying primarily in Osaka or maybe Osaka is the last leg of your golden triangle exploration activities and you're not overly concerned with having the most impeccable access to transportation and the bullet train and being able to get out of the city on various day trips then perhaps Namba area is for you as it's going to be placing you in the heart of Osaka and again that energy and the vibe and everything that Dotenbori and the Namba area has to offer may very well be the best match for that type of itinerary. Now we've mentioned food a number of times and if that's the type of vacation you're interested in, in building then Osaka is definitely the right location for you. In fact it's known as the culinary capital of Japan arguably and you know i might have a certain different preference in that regard there's another city in japan where i feel that title would be more accurately placed i don't want to start a war here i don't want pitchforks and torches outside my door so perhaps we'll leave that for another video but don't get me wrong osaka will definitely live up to the expectations that have been set if you've been doing some research on street food and all 
the food offerings that Osaka has to offer worry not. It is indeed that good. Now Nipponbashi is one of, if not the best places to whet your appetite. It's on the eastern edge of Dotonbori and Kurumon Market is just a little bit of a stretch away from that Nipponbashi area. Now Kurumon Market may not be as famous as the Tsukiji Fish Market in Tokyo or the Nishiki Market in Kyoto. However, we are not concerned with popularity contests here. It holds its own as far as the metric that we are concerned, and that is our taste buds. It is very hard to argue that the fresh seafood and the quality that is provided at Kurumon Market is anything but top class. In fact, while it can be expensive because of the reasons we just mentioned, it is very difficult to argue with the value that is being delivered and the immediate elevation of your culinary experience, which is again our number one concern. And Kurumon Market will certainly deliver on that promise. Now, shopping was also a call to fame as far as the Dotonbori area is concerned. And Shishinbashi is on the western side of Dotonbori. It's going to offer you a tremendous amount of shopping. Anything from the famous brands such as Zara, Uniqlo, maybe a little bit of a taste from home, H&M, but with the Japanese twist on it, of course. There is endless opportunities for you to explore and spend your hard-earned money on all the cool trends available in Osaka. So definitely check out this place. Again, if it falls in line with your itinerary and your preferences, and one note as far as Japan as a whole is concerned, never forget that in Japan a lot of businesses expand vertically, not just horizontally. As you know, Japan is a mountainous area, it's an island, and prime real estate is hard to come by. Therefore, some of the best restaurants, some of the best shopping experiences and entertainment can oftentimes be found in the higher up floors across the various buildings in some of these famous areas and again this isn't just true of Osaka but it's the case in Tokyo as well so never be afraid to check on those floor maps which every building has they're going to let you know what types of businesses are available on what floors that way you're not going to miss out on a potential incredible experience when it's just a few meters higher up take an elevator ride and make sure you don't miss out. So that's going to do it for my top three lists of best places to stay in Osaka. I hope this video fulfills its objective in providing you with some tips and some considerations as far as maximizing what you're going to be able to get out of your trip to this incredibly wonderful city. Now, of course, Osaka has a lot to offer and some of its calls to fame are everything from food, entertainment, and the proximity of all all the other wonderful stuff that's in the area that is world famous from Himeji Castle to Kyoto to Nara to Kobe to Hiroshima, Fukuoka, you name it, Lake Biwa, the largest freshwater lake in Japan and all of the various cities and the surrounding areas for you to explore and the national treasures. Literally, Osaka is at the heart of a lot of this stuff and it makes it a fantastic place to set up your home base and explore the area and everything else it has to offer. So if you like this video, if it provided you with the value that I'm hoping that it did, uh, don't forget to subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Like the video and stay tuned. There is a lot more to come. Thank you very much.